This is the review for Algebra Quarter 1, Test 5. So it's the practice test on the front of the study guide. So let's take a look at our first problem here. It talks about how Linda has a job offer that uh, with two companies. And one company offers her a starting salary of 28000 So that's just a starting point. That's her constant. With a raise of 3000 each year. So when I see the word each or per, this tells me, oh, this might be my variable. But I have to go to the question to see if it's the case. After how many hours? How many hours? Or how many years? How many years? So that is my variable right there. So I know this is my variable term. So we'll say company number one has a starting salary of $3,000 each year plus $28,000 is the salary that we start off with, the $3,000 raise each year. And then we have the next company. They offer $36,000. So they offer more to start with but they only give a raise of $2,000 each year, so less, a smaller rate of increase. So they ask, when, after how many years, will the company charge the same, or company, will you make the same with both companies? And so that's where the equal sign comes in. So now we're ready to solve. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract that 2,000, so there's my 2,000 there, 2,000 Y from both sides, and when I do that, I'm also going to go ahead and subtract that 28,000 from both sides. And so once I've done that, I now have my 1,000y equals 8,000. And so when I solve, I'm going to just divide by 1,000 on both sides. So what that'll do is it'll cancel out those zeros, and it'll leave me with 8. So 8 years it's going to take for the two companies to charge or to give you the same amount. So next four problems are dealing with inequalities and absolute values. So what you have to remember is you want to isolate the absolute value. So first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is multiply by 2 to cancel out this 1 half. Now if I do that, I have to do the same thing to both sides. So now I'm left with the absolute value isolated. So once it's isolated, if you look at the inequality sign, it's a greater. Greater is an or statement. That means that the values of this inequality, of this absolute value, are going to be greater. So that means if the numbers are really small on the negative side, when you take the absolute value, they become big. And if you take an absolute value of a really big number, it's still really big. So that's why it's an OR statement. And so when we go ahead and solve, we'll do x plus 2 is greater than 4, but it's going to be less than the negatives, less than negative 4. And so when I go ahead and solve, I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 2 from all sides. And when I do that, I'm left with a negative 6 is greater than x, but x is greater than positive 2. So let's go ahead and graph that. If I put negative 6 here, and it should really be an open circle. So there's 6, so this is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. So 2 would go right there, and that's an open circle as well. So x is greater. Greater means to the right. But here, x is less. Less means to the left, less than the negative 6. So if I was to write this out, if it's an OR statement, x has to be less than negative 6, or x is greater than 2. But here they just wanted the graph of the solution, so that's what I'll be looking for. So you didn't need to write this expression here in the algebraic form, but the graph is what you get graded on. So the next problem is one in which we have to do some work. we got to add the two. Always isolate the absolute value. So 5 multiplied by the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 25. So I go ahead and divide by 5. That'll cancel out the 5's there. So I'm left with x minus 3 is less. The absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 5. Now notice, I now have the absolute value isolated. If you remember, a less, absolute value less, is an and statement. So that means the inequalities are going to go together. All the values are going to be in between two numbers. So what that means is x minus 3 is going to be less than the positive, but greater than the negative. So I'm going to set it, set it greater than negative 5. So here I'm adding 3 to both sides. And when I do that, I end up getting a negative 2. So we'll stick negative 2 here. And here I end up with an 8. So the values of x are greater than negative 2, but less than positive 8. So if that's negative 2, it's 1. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
So I'll put those open circles on those. And all the values are in between. They're less than the 8, but greater than the negative 2. So let's take a look at our next two problems that deal with inequalities. And first thing I'm going to do here is isolate the absolute value. So I need to add that 4 and 5 tenths to both sides. So I'm left with x plus 5 is now greater than or equal to 12. And so if you remember again, greater than or equal to is going to end up being an or statement. And that's why we, when we set up the absolute value, when we set up the two inequalities, we're going to have x plus 5 greater than or equal to the 12, which would give us numbers that are bigger, but less than or equal to the negative 12, because numbers that are really small are really big when you take their absolute value. So we go ahead and solve by isolating the x. Subtract the 5 from all sides. It leaves me at the negative 17 is greater than or equal to x, and x is greater than or equal to 7. So I'm not going to write the answer this way, though. I'm going to write it as an or statement. x is less than or equal to negative 17, or x is greater than or equal to 7. If I didn't do this, if I didn't use the word or, then it would sound like all the values are in between, but they're not. X values do not work with both inequalities. They just work with one or the other. So that's why we have to use the word or in between. Next problem, I need to add this 5 tenths to both sides. Make sure you line up those decimals as you do that work. And we end up with the absolute value of X plus 5 tenths is less than 4. Less, less means an and statement. All the values are in between two numbers. So when we go ahead and solve this, I'm going to set the x plus 5 tenths less than 4, but greater, greater than negative 4. And so when I go ahead and solve, I need to subtract the 5 tenths from both sides. Make sure you add that decimal so you can get the right answer there. So I'll do the same thing here. Subtract that 5 tenths from both sides. And so when I do that, I'm left here with a negative 4 and 5 tenths is less than x. And x is less than 4 and, let's see here, I'm subtracting there, so less than 3 and 5 tenths. And so this is my answer. I do not need to write and. I could, if I wanted to, could set it as x is greater than negative 4 and 5 tenths and x is less than 4, 3 and 5 tenths. But since it's an and statement, all the values of x are in between. And we'll see this format used again with these next few problems, the domain and range. Not this one, but the one after it. So let's take a look at it. Here, they're talking about domain and range. Domain represents the x's. Range represents the y's. So the x values, these are the x values here. Just write them down, 3, 4, negative 6. You just list them. And then we do the y's. So here are the y values, negative 2, 1, and 5. Just list them, negative 2, 1, 5. That's it. That's all you do. Well, let's take a look at the next few problems. We, here we have the same thing. However, this time, we have an unlimited amount of values that represent this graph. It's continuous. And so what we need to represent the domain as, is the x values, is from a minimum point and a maximum point. So minimum point is negative 4. So negative 4. And a maximum point is 1. Or actually 2, it looks like. 1, 2. So 2. So those are x values. So let me go ahead and make that space that out just a bit more here. So this was 2. So I'm going to put the 2 here. I'm going to put the x value here. Now the x values run in between. See, all these values that make up this graph, all these ordered pairs that make up this line and this line here, all those x values are in between negative 4 and 2. So the way I represent that is with an inequality. So x is less than or equal to 2. So all the values less than or equal to 2 but they are greater than or equal to negative 4. So if I graph that down here, you see here's, negative, here's 2, here's negative 4. All the values are in between these points, but including them as well. So all the values from 2 to negative 4. Those are all the possible domains. Now the ranges run along the y-axis. So I would look for the lowest point, negative 2. So I'll put negative 2 here. The highest point is 1. So I'll put 1 over here, and the ranges are y's. So the ranges run from negative 2 to 1, and they're all the values in between those numbers as well. So that's why I use that inequality. y is less than or equal to 1, but 
greater than or equal to negative 2. Next problem talks about a function. A function is when you have domains that only have one range. So what you can do is look at a domain, like here's 2, and look to see if it has some range values that are on opposite ends of this two, of this positive 2, from opposite ends of the x axis. And here it does. It has a y value here and a y value down here that both have the same domain. And so I could draw a line between these points, and that is called the vertical line test. So it fails that vertical line test. And so what I would say is it's not a function, not a function, because it fails the vertical, the vertical line test. Now, another way to say that is that we could say that both, or this domain 2 has two different range values. So that's another way to say it. The domain, the domain 2, if it was to be a function, can only have one range. But here, the domain 2 has two ranges. So the last question asks us, again, another relation asks us whether it's a function or not. Well, all you do is look at the domains. And I know these are the domains because that's where the number starts. See, the arrows represent where the number finishes. So those are the ranges, the outputs. And you look to see if the domains have two ranges. Well, negative 6 and negative 2 both have a range value of 0, but that's okay. You can have that as long as negative 6 doesn't have a different range value. So what I'll say here is, yes, it is a function because each each range each domain each domain has one range and that would be our answer so those are the types of problems that you're going to see on this week's test